Good morning. Welcome to the program you're watching this morning. My name is Femi Akonde. Well, the many controversies stirred by Abdul Rashid Mena, of course, that's a former pension boss, has still not gone away. It is still very much in the front burner of our national discourse, especially in the face of um, the, a government that says it has zero tolerance for corruption. That um, issue of uh, um, the reinstatement, controversial reinstatement of Abdul Rashid Mena is still a major talking point. And that is what we'll also be talking about on the program today. And I'm sure you're all aware of um, the heated argument, the crossfire between the head of service and the chief of staff to the president yesterday at the Federal Executive Council meeting, even though um, we really did not hear what they were saying, but it is believed that it is not unconnected with the leaked memo where the head of service claimed that President Muhammad Buhari was verbally warned against allowing the reinstatement of Abdul Rashid Mena. So many controversies, so many things to talk about, so many intrigues. Well, to talk about um, these on the program this morning is Dr. Jide Johnson, Deputy Provost, National Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Welcome to the program, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And, all right. And I also have Barrister Evans Ufeli, a public affairs analyst. Welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Good yeah. morning, viewers. Okay, let's start this way. We all watched, um, I believe you have seen the video, of course, it was viral yesterday, where um, the head of service and the chief of staff to the president appeared to be in a heated argument. What do you make of that, your immediate reaction to well, that? Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's normal for disagreement to be expressed, but not at that level and not at that forum, considering um, the fact that there was a leaked memo um, sent to the president via the office of the chief of staff to the, to, to the, to, to the president. I, I think um, prior to that meeting, uh, which shows that there is division within the cabinet, mm. the kitchen cabinet of the, of the presidency, that issue ought to have been addressed before. even before uh, they got to the cabinet room where they have the Federal Executive Council meeting. From all indications, from the body language, from the gesture, from the gesticulation, you will know that all was not well. No matter many attempts that have been made by the spokesperson to the president to say that, oh, there are 1,000 issues they were discussing. No. Mm. So what is wrong in having um, that kind of, um, or seeing that kind of outburst at the Federal Executive Council meeting, just of course a minute before the President walked in to preside over the Federal yeah, Because Federal basically you are expecting them to come and discuss serious issues, and I think that you don't, you, you definitely know that the issues were personal. But Maynard's issue is also a serious issue. I well, think we are no, all no, interested no, we are, in we are, we are, how we, it we, be we, we are talking about the interaction between the Chief of Staff to the President, and the, the head, head of service. Of service. Yeah. Could they have resolved that issue before that meeting? That's my own bone of contention. I'm, I mean, as you will come to it because it's a serious issue. It's an issue that affects you and I. It's an issue that strikes this present administration at the heart. The heart of their campaign is zero tolerance for corruption. Mm. And you are trying to bring in someone that has been accused of corruption back to government. Mm. Okay. Um, Barrister Ofeli, we hear that the president, of course, is in the papers this morning. Mr. Ofeli is in the papers this morning on um, Punch newspaper, of course. It says, I'm um, talking about the leaked memo that the president has summoned Abakari, that is the chief of staff, and Oyo Ita, that's the head of service, after the fake clash. Let me ask you again, what do you make of that? We've just heard of, we just, um, Jide Johnson just told us about his, what do you make of that? Yes, uh, the discourse they had was not during the FEC meeting. Before the FEC meeting. Yes, yeah. so let's get that right. So that we don't paint. The, at the chamber. Yeah, it was at the chamber, but the meeting hadn't commenced then. And then they were having like a discourse. Now, there was no um, audio to that effect. So everything we're going to say to that effect are conjectures. Mm. But from the body language and the sound language, it seems something is not very, very okay. So they are trying to trash out perhaps before they finally come to a conclusion of what should be. But if you look at it, the larger picture to this is the fact that uh, there's no cohesiveness in this government. I, I, have delayed, I have delayed in making this pronouncement before now because I was watching that. If you look at the previous uh, issue, 
the one between the NNPC, uh, Kachuku, and all that, you will find this laxity. Uh, somebody has made instruction. Like the woman said he won the pray, told the president, okay, about this issue. This issue will be perhaps she was not taken seriously. Okay, uh, at some point Kachuku wanted to see the president for he made several attempts, he could not. So you find that even in uh, even in homes, even in marriages where communication is not um, watertight, where it's not it's not coercive, you are gonna find reactions like this and that's what's playing out. And if the government have come out to say that uh, their assignment to Nigerians is to fight corruption and nip it in the bud. Then we, we, we expect more from them because what we're getting now does not in any way show that uh, they are ready to fight any kind of corruption because, I mean, someone who has been indicted, who has been on the watch list of the ESCC and uh, suddenly was in the country, nobody was aware, he was now moved, you know, to Ministry like Interior and all that and uh, uh, there was the allegation that the president was aware and he didn't do it, before the woman spoke, they were pushing everything to her when it leaked. Yeah. You understand? And she came out to say, no, I told you that this is what is going on. But if you didn't take me serious, you didn't do anything about it. And uh, at the chambers where they were discussing, I still found it uh, disconcerting because yeah, she too have, was not. We have, we have that um, video. I would like um, us to um, look at it together and analyze it and see what we can make out of it. Well, that's um, the Federal Executive Council, just um, the ministers and, of course, the of aides to the president just before, shortly before the meeting, before the president walked in there. And that's the video there. Um, well, okay, we've, we're not yet at that part where um, she had that heated, heated exchange with the chief of staff to the president. But I think the big worry here now is that lack of cohesion that you say um, is lacking in the president's cabinet. How concerned should we be about this? Now and this how would this impede on, um, let's say, policies and programs of the... Okay, well, that's, um, there, there we have it. I think um, she's getting an audience there with the vice president and um, the chief of staff. She's, okay, she, here she walks back to her seat but not satisfied with maybe the response she got, I think, yeah. She's sitting, stands up again, and returns to make a point. So what could, we, we, we really don't know what they're talking about, but there are insinuations. What, 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 what do you think? It couldn't have been any other thing other than the business of governance, or other than the lapses in governance, because their the reaction, yes, their reaction points to that. It points to the fact that something is not right and they have to trash it out. But if you look at it, when you have um, this kind of controversy in governance, it, the, the worst hit are the masses, okay? Because they have a mandate, okay? That's for those who are elected. And they must be able to deliver to the promise of democracy. The, the promises made during that campaign was the, the hallmark for which the people donated their allegiance to the government. And if that is not done properly, or if, if the corruption is not targeted at some persons, and some persons seems to be above it, or some persons who are on watch list mm -hmm. are reinstated and all that, I mean, you, you begin to have problems because if we are going to fight corruption, let's do it the right way. Let's make sure that we clean up the system, you understand, and make democracy to work for the average Nigerian. But where it is now uh, a selective issue, this person should be nailed, this one should not be nailed. And if somebody who had, uh, who had taken up who, who is alleged to have uh, misappropriated funds that as re, uh, regard pension and all that. And if that person uh, is in the country, he was away before he's in the country, he's indicted, and you are aware and you do not take action, and it's now you are taking a belated action to tell the ESCC was not aware and all that. I mean, what are we really doing? We, we, let, let it not be that they should allow Nigerians to begin to voice out. There are a lot of people who supported this government. The government had goodwill, overwhelming goodwill when they came into power. But they seem to be losing it because of their lack of tact, systems and method. They lack systems and method. If they can handle the, the, the policies of governance effectively, they will give Nigerians you know, a leeway to you know, give them the benefit of the doubt to see her. But, I mean, two years down the line, it seems not to be working. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so sad. You talked about um, the government's belated action to issues like this. Now, this is not um, the first issue we'll be having. We've had several issues, of course, look at that of Mbabache Lawal and the DG of the NI. We know eventually uh, the government, the president, uh, 
eventually relieved them of the appointment before the suspension of the report was submitted, and it took the president time to respond. Now, this snail speed in... It took the president six months to constitute his cabinet. I'm not sure um, the ambassador have been appointed. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, the board of federal agencies have not been not constituted. Next reps. And then for, for, for six months, the DG of NIA was on suspension. The secretary to the federal government was on suspension. And you have a permanent secretary working under the HOS, acting as a secretary to the federal, to, to, to the federal yeah, government. government. Uh, you see from all indication, and let's situate it also with what the wife of the president said, that majority of the people in the government were not people that campaigned with them. They were people they never knew. They, they were people that did not even participate in the process. They are now and calling. They did not even understand <laughs> they the are programs now calling that the government the promised. Now, it, it is the same administration whereby you have different agencies in the presidency sending security reports to the Senate concerning the confirmation reports or non-confirmation of EFCC chairman. So he, he tells you that it's, it's, it's a house divided against itself. And it cannot it, stand. That's it, what they it, say. He tells you that it's a house because there's no courage. There's no direction. There's no leadership. The truth must, must be told. There's no, there's no leadership as regards what will be the direction of, of government. You know, we said, oh, the president wants to select the best. Time waits for nobody. The time, the time of office is four years. Now, you can't have additional time to those terms. Once you have completed the four years, if you win the election, you continue. If you lose the election, you go back and sit at home. So when you don't manage time, time is a convertible resources, resources that you convert to deliverables of democracy, resources that you convert to financial resources, to natural resources. And when you don't manage time properly, you have this type of situation that we are having at our hand. There's a particular saying in my local dialect. One thing about Pelo Rimi is Now, if you stay too long in the toilet, you know, in the typical, our typical toilet, eh, if you stay too long, different kind of flies will meet you. Different kind of flies. And that is what is happening with this. When it comes to decision making, when it comes to critical decision making, Speed. There's, there's no doubt that this administration is found one thing. Wow. Okay, well, before we um, digress um, too much now, the issue here is about the embattled former pension boss, Abdul Rashid Maina. But we've also, they say he's in hiding, but we've been hearing um, comments or statements credited to Abdul Rashid Maina. His media aide was on TV yesterday, was on TVC News yesterday, so, said, talking about um, his boss, he said his boss was brought in, of course, to sanitize um, that pension sector where um, it was alleged at that time that there was a massive fraud going on in that sector. And that now his boss is now being haunted by some people in that sector whose toes he has stepped on. What do you make of all this? Now, you have the Mina case, you have the Baru case, you have the Babachi case, you have the NI case. And which critical corruption case. I've said it on this program that the fight against corruption of this is on the pages of newspaper. <laughs> that the money recovered, nobody's even keeping track. Now if you look at the trend, there's, there's no prosecution. Have we secured any judgment concerning any corrupt cases under this present, present administration? So, um, Mina's case, talking about the, the hunter now become the hunted. Uh, it's, 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 it's a classic case of what is happening. The present Minister of Interior. Abdurrahman Dambazao. Uh, and then, if you look at the cases, uh, the, the Babachi case, concerned, who cut the grass for this year? Because he cut the grass for last year. Who cut the grass for this year? Who cut the... So he talks about systemic corruption. And we don't take issues, we don't take steps to address those issues. We just treat it on the surface. Now, for the first time, and I stand to record, for the first time, the presidency was not quick to respond to Minan's threat. For the first time. There's, uh, has there been any official statement from, uh, from the presidency? Just, or uh, from, just from yesterday, the president, the president that, oh, spokesman you know what, assured what, Nigerians that, that the matter will not be swept under the carpet. It, typically, what is usually their nature of response? Typically, 
They are silent about this. And sometimes silence means contempt. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, Ophelia, now, the pension, the intrigues now surrounding this um, Abdul Rashid Maynard's case, it, people are confused. Who do we believe? The president is silent, of course, like he said. The president is saying we're hearing from Maina. We've not had so much from EFCC, even though they say uh, uh, he has been declared wanted. They found some sum of money linked to him, but they are yet to even really prove that. Are you worried about um, EFCC's, should I say, um, e EFCC's level of involvement in this matter? Because people say um, they have not been proactive and have not been able to, they have not even done due, due diligence in handling this um, issue. Yeah, it actually, EFCC started failing when Mayna returned to the country unknown to them because it was on their watch list before now. So why he returned, they were unaware. They started failing from there. And um, belatedly, they rushed to trace some of the property in Kaduna and Abuja and they seal up some properties. After and that. Um, news filter that he has been reinstated into the civil yes, service. Yes, after news. And um, he was also uh, allowed to leave again. Because I had thought that immediately the news broke, they would have been able to seal all, all necessary border areas for which he would get out. Now he's out again and making statements from afar. But if you look at the statement he's making, you'll find out that, you see, you cannot become corrupt alone. Mm. Even corrupt people, when they steal money, they'll be looking for somebody who is honest, who will keep it. <laughs> they'll be asking, is that person honest? Is that banker honest? Or is this honest? So what Mayna is saying may not be totally wrong, that they should give him time to even mention names of people who really, you know, embezzle this fund and all that. But my question is, is it now that he should be making this statement? Before now, when the allegation was, what did he do to uh, salvage the situation? Or to point, if he's not the one, what did he do before now to get across the security agencies to the source and authority? So he cannot totally exonerate himself from this. And the lessons to be learned from this is that we have a system that allow wanton corruption. We have a system where the boss have unfettered power to state resources, to the resources of agency without proper check, without balance, without anything. And that is the way we have lived all the way. That is why we've not been able to make uh, any kind of success in any of our... And, and this government coming up so to say um, they are unable to even address issues of corruption as, as, uh, as speedily as they should. And it is a problem in itself because when you say the president is taking his time, what do you mean by that? It's not the president's time. It's the time of Nigerians. It's our time. Yeah, it's our time. You get it. It's not the president's time. So I think that the government should sit up and begin to address issues of corruption head on, irrespective of who is involved. There should be no uh, favoritism. There should be no discrimination. Corruption is corruption. You understand? No matter where it's emanating from. It should be addressed the way it should be addressed. So All right, we have we have a caller, Tunde. He's calling from London. Good morning, Tunde. Uh, Welcome to the program. Hi, <clears throat> sorry. Hi, good morning. Um, I just um sort of tuned into your into your station. Um, I've just got a few things to say. Right. I think I'm um, going by a lot of um I'm following a lot of this program about Mina and all the corruption going on in the, in the country. I think we 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 have not laid a solid foundation or the foundation that was laid has already, has already crumbled. What I mean by that is this. Lately, we, um, on your channel, um, I was this is one of the programs where we call a man, a man called, um, by the name of Osagi Oronsai or so, however you pronounce his name, excuse me for the pronunciation. Yeah. The point I'm trying to make is that he put down a, template, a plan of action to restructure the um, civil service. There are people there that have good ideas, but when we follow the, uh, when we follow the, the after effects of the, of the plan he tried to lay, nobody was supportive of it. Nobody followed it through to, to authenticate or just to test prove it. I say, what 
what is there in this plan that can help the nation? Now we have academic institutions in the country that they can send this to professors. You see, these are the people, when you give it to um, a university or, or in, in, in each geopolitical zone, to look at it with an eagle eye and say, guys, test this. How can we restore? Because we, those are the, right. those oh, are the leaders right. of the right. I know you, um, we, you can go on and on on this topic, but we have to uh, move on. He's talking about the Onrosai report, and we have so many other reports that have not been even picked up to, for consideration, not to even talk of uh, maybe implementing recommendations from that report. And now, talking about, you said that Mayna is saying that he's not the only one involved in the whole um, pension fraud scheme. There are others, there are accomplices, there are people, he's even um, accused some directors in the civil service and those ones are still in the civil service as we speak today. Now another thing is, I listened to the, um, the media aide to Mayna yesterday speaking. He said there was a petition against some members of the Seventh Senate for having collected three billion naira from pension thieves. And I believe that petition came from Mayna. And they say these are some of the reasons why Mayna is being haunted today. What, what would you say about that? You see, the, the more you look, the less you see. And as a country, we are not yet ready to address the issue of corruption. Yakub was in NNPC, you know, the case of the Andrew MD and stole money, mm. allegedly. Kachuku allegedly said that the present NNPC director approved money without going through the board, without going through the deal process, the if you don't go through the deal process. You know, we lost the basis for fighting corruption because nepotism is the highest form of corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption is when my child score 180 and yours scores, two, yours scores 280 and my child can enter into that university and your own child that scores 280 cannot enter and they are both Nigerian. Now, if we want to deal with this issue, there are offices we need to, because we always limit it to the president. The president cannot fight corruption. It does not. Hold your thoughts on that. We have um, a caller, God Day, calling us from Italy. Good morning, God Day. Hey, good morning to you and good morning to your guests. Welcome good morning, to the program. Sir. Uh, uh, I love the discussion this morning you people are having. And, uh, uh, from my own perspective, perspective of seeing this case, uh, in face of this uh, MENA issue and other things that will be going on in the country, uh, Mr. President is very slow taking decisions in the first place. And having said this, I don't know what Nigeria means now is somebody that will build the foundation so that the next person that is coming will pick up from there. And people speak integrity, integrity on our president Buhari. Today, that integrity, I think I'm not saying it anymore because at his age, as a father to the nation, you should not be taking to um, and my tea. This is what you will be looking for years ago. You get it and you have to register your name now so that Nigeria will not forget you. But the way things are going right now, uh, I'm scared, I'm afraid that old man like him, as our father, and he's not building a foundation that the younger ones will follow. It's a pity. All right. and, uh, Thank you very much, I sir. don't know what to say here. Thank you from Italy. I have a nice day in Lagos. Thank you. Thank you. Too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I did interrupt you. So, so let's take the case of the pension scheme. The accountant of pension scheme, the director, uh, the director of finance of pension scheme, the members pension of the board. board. How can one individual? Uh, you can't. Do how it can alone. one individual? Now you begin to ask yourself. You see, there, have you seen any accountant general of the federation being prosecuted? That as the accountant general of audition, money are leaving agencies of government. Have you ever seen the auditor general of the federation being prosecuted? Until we begin to hold some people holding offices to answer. Because what's the essence of having an auditor general of the federation? What's the essence of having an accountant general of the federation? What's the essence of having the attorney general? So it is beyond 
the president. It's about institution. Now, if there is a crime in an office, let's say in NNPC, you round up the director of finance, you pick up the accountants, every one of them, because under your watch, this money was stolen, because I don't know how yeah. somebody will take money yes. out without them knowing. And that's when we because start fighting be the corruption. One to retire the because fund. those offices are put in place to serve as checks and balances. And if you don't do your checks, because there's no way, MENA is just a scapegoat. One of the many hundreds in the pension scheme that stole money. All right, MENA is just a scapegoat. We'll yeah, continue well. from that. I will have um, Joshua from Big Da in Niger State. Good morning, Joshua. Good morning, Femi Akandia, and good morning to the guests. Welcome good morning. to the program. Um, Mr. Femi, I will suggest that the president and uh, our leader should face the business of covenant and face the business squarely, not argument. We are tired of the argument. We are tired of their complaint. We are tired of their excuses. Are you getting Nigerians are dying of hunger every day. People are committing suicide. Are you getting they need to wake up and wake up straight. To the business of government. Not argument. We are tired over two years. Is this only argument we are going to eat in this very nation? Let them break up. All right. And break up quickly before the nation will run into something else. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. He says we're tired of arguments, seeing memos, leaked memos, counter memos, and everything. And you said Mena is just a scapegoat. I was coming to one scapegoat. I was coming to that. That is he just being um, demonized or unnecessary or unjustly victimized? Yeah, you know, before now, the allegation was on him, and he left. You understand? He left the country. He was nowhere to be found. Placed on watch list. He was a wanted person. Okay? He wasn't available to speak for himself. To yes, himself. yes. And uh, even before, the, before he left, he didn't come out to tell Nigerians or the EFCC that there are people who are involved in this scam. You understand? I was taking there to go and check or to go and go, but there are people who are involved in this. And he didn't do that, okay? Now he's saying it. I don't want us to wish it away because there is no way you can become corrupt at that level alone. Take all the funds and just, because the, the, the civil servants are the ones that will retire the funds. The Auditor General, the Accountant, and all these are people who are involved, like he said, you understand? So the lessons learned here is that we must begin to interrogate our leaders, those who lead, who are in uh, strategic positions. Nigerians should demand for the prosecution of the accountant general of the federation, the, the, all of them. They, we, because, yes, yes, we, we, because if we begin to point to the accusing finger to Mena, Mena, he too will start to tell us, just like he's doing now, that. Uh, you are just raising alarm. The family members are even saying that Mena is supposed to be protected please and hold, not prosecuted. Please hold your thoughts on that. We have Ochuko calling from Ilori, Kwara State. Good morning, Ochuko. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome Good to morning. the program. Good morning. Um, I'm happy to listen to what you are saying. As far as the world corruption is concerned, the president alone is the one fighting corruption. You see, we talk too much in the pointing fingers at APC. What we really need in this country to bring Nigeria back to track, sanity back, is for a position to take place where every system will be cleaned up and then we rearrange the shuttle Nigeria back to what it's supposed to be. Without that, even if another government comes, we'll continue the same old story. This is what we did in EDT. That APC has come. The president is alone, fighting alone. A revolution is what we need, period. All right, thank you, Ochuko from Ilori. Well, we'll take a quick break at this point, and when we return, we'll continue with the rest of the program. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're still talking the many controversies of Abdul Rashid Mayna or Mayna Gate, as some people call it on social media and um, in other forums. Now, gentlemen, this issue has 
one thing that appears to have embarrassed the presidency is the fact that the head of service claims or claimed that the president was aware of everything. He was informed, he was briefed that Abdul Rashid Maina is about to be reinstated into the civil service. But he was quiet, he didn't say anything. I be, if I were to be the consultant to the president, you know what I would ask him to do for his administration to have the right direction? Fire your chief of staff. Fire your chief of staff. Now, the Baru issue, the day Kashuku went to see, yeah. to see the, president. the president, Baru was sent to see the vice president and later went to the mocks and had photo ops, with photo ops with the president on that same day. Now, the report concerning confirmation or non-confirmation, the discordant tunes that come from the president, confirmation or non-confirmation of Magu, the security report, came from who? From the presidency. Now, the leaked memo by the HOS to the president was rooted. The truth of the matter is that in practice, the chief of staff, of staff to the president is the president. Yeah, a very powerful. Is, is the pres the in practice, in reality, is the president. That's the reality of governance. Because whatever the, he will see all memos, all documents first. He will be the one that will decide the one the president will attend to, the president will not attend to, the one he will keep. So he is the power block. You, you talked about discordant tunes now coming from the presidency. Maybe that is why um, Babache Lawal, if you remember that uh, famous interview granted, and he asked, who is the presidency? Because, because it is like, we really don't know. Is, this, is, is it the president no, Buhari no, that is the, saying the, the, this? In, is it the chief of in, staff in, saying in, this? But hold on, I'll let you react to that. We have Reverend Dominic calling from Alimo Show. Good morning, Reverend Dominic. Welcome good to the morning. program. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, Chide. Good, good morning. Good morning, Van. Good, good morning, morning, Reverend. Uh, the, the, I'm, I'm not more, so much worried about this government Why? because I came to understanding. I thought when Buhari and his company is coming, which I supported fully, that angels are coming. I don't know if it's the same Nigerian. Let me give you an example. I listened to the spokesperson of this government this morning on AIC. He said that Mr. President has delivered on security. And my problem is Nigeria, it's not even the place of governance. If we talk about security in Nigeria, can we take account what did Boko Haram keep in two years? And how many people have hurt men have killed in two years? So we can fight a balance. You are willing to fall to take it down. When you come to this conclusion, the security we are saying this government has done well, to me, to my own account, I will be wrong, is zero. Because hurt men have killed more from Sokoto to Enugu to Potakot to all the whole nation. Nobody's talking about that. Let me give you an example. The African has been building all this while and we throw away the key. How could one man steal money? The last time I checked, the office of national security doesn't print money, doesn't have money. The CPN governor, who packed the money from CPN to the office of Dafiki, is still enjoying the press of office. The one man Dafiki is in prison. How could Dafiki go into $30 and pounds and Naira and CPA and nobody saw him and nobody has to tell him? The way we fight this corruption, Jide, I have my information because I control the government. I'm a really confused. All right, thank, thank you, you very much, Reverend Dominic. I interrupted you now. We're talking about the discordant tunes now coming out of the presidency. Now, now, now until Trump had General Kelly, you know, he had to fire his chief of staff, you know, yeah. Primrose. Mm. That was when stability began to happen in his government. And you see, there are offices that Nigerians should be interested in when cabinet are being constituted. Yeah. There's what is called the kitchen cabinet. How diverse, how diverse is that, a, cabinet. is that cabinet? And I tell you the truth, the moment the kitchen cabinet of this administration was constituted, I knew there was a problem because there's no diversity. And I stand to be correct, there's no diversity. It's so narrow and it could be parochial and it could be, it could be, it, are, are you getting my point? So, the problem for this present administration is that the chief of staff to the president does not have the capacity for that office. And that's why we're having this type of 
problem, if it's not Baru today, it is Mena tomorrow. If it's not Mena, it will be Babachilawa. If it is not Babachilawa, it will be Bagu. Because if you look around the president, what has happened? And the wife said it. Remember, November last year, November, on an interview, yeah, yeah, interview on House BP House and Services, that the people that are surrounding the president are not allowing him to Now, talking him. about the chief of staff appears to have been fingered in so many things, even the Baru and uh, Kachuku issue. Now, the, of course, we, we saw the face of um, he the had with the head of service you know. yesterday, even with the EFCC, the back and forth, the EFCC, the DSS, and everything. And even when um, MTN was fined, uh, yeah. Some, yeah, some many months back when MTN was fined, yeah. I would let you react to that. But first, we have Yakub calling from Dokwemo. Good morning, Mr. Yakub. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm very happy that uh, for the long period of time I get to speak. You see, uh, one of the guests in this video, I think, if I don't really speak, uh, Mr. Gigi, I've said one thing, very, very important thing. See, if that chief of staff does not pass in this government, it is the fact that we are going to remain for the long time until this government gone. Because he was the brain behind all those things. Look at it. The memo written by Kachuku leak, this one leak, and then the gentleman in the city have already said it all. You cannot see the sacred president without this very particular person. If that very particular man, but, uh, what is his name? If he does not start from that position, I can tell you that this president will never do well. That is if you keep on this start. Thank you, and God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I was talking about um, the many issues now tied to the chief of staff, to the president, who is supposed to be like a backbone of yeah. the presidency. You see, every institution is a mental construct. And the composition of the institution is driven by the leaders of the institutions. If you look at the presidency now, the administrative leader of the presidency is the chief of staff. You understand? And the issues that have happened so far, the lapses we've had so far, and the corresponding response of the president is showing that both the chief of staff of the president and the president himself, they are lacking in systems and methods. Why I say this is because the president ought to have known by now that his chief of staff is a huge problem to the administration. And that is what is creating the embarrassment. That is what is creating the lack of coercion. That is what is even creating. There are ministers that don't have access to the president. I don't know how that works in a democracy. So what then is democracy? Is this the government of the people? I, because I don't know because if those who even lead do not have access to those who lead, then I wonder what those who are led. <laughs> you understand? Because it's a practical case of uh, incompetence, a practical case of uh, 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 inauspicious tendencies. Because if you have a worker, a staff that is not up and doing, what are you supposed to do in the interest of the masses? You are supposed to take him off and get someone who will create stability. The, the, the wife of the president, um, on several occasions, voiced out to this, even though she has not been able to particularly name and point to someone. But she has said that there's a problem here. This is the formation. This formation is wrong. This formation is not coercive. You understand? But they say, it's a woman. She's supposed to belong to one room or another. It is, we, we must begin to, you know, position things rightly. And the, the issue you talked about where you are going to fight corruption, fine. Nigerians, we all know that corruption brought us where we are here. Okay? We, we are... We are backward because of all right, corruption. All right, all right. Sorry, please. But, um, I beg your pardon. Hold your thoughts. Um, we have Okora for calling from Aro Chuku, a regular view of our program. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Finney, and good morning, Dr. Jida and the Barista. Good morning. Good morning. morning. It's a pleasure to have you once again. Um, Nigeria is a country where employer and employees take their state responsibility when it comes to who did this, who did that, why, and when. 
The area we start as a part of our mistakes, the better for us, and let us stop blaming from Dick and Harris. The country must move forward. Like Bishop, I still like the philosophy and moral values. We have to look at it. Now, I have a question for Dr. Jude, sir. Yes. Now, as the Deputy Provost of the Institute of Humanity, how do you see our educational sector presently? I was told that from the they said that the election was going to go on strike. Looking at the scenario right now in Nigeria, what do you think the federal government should do before all this uh, other uh, crimes or type of crime will come back? Thank you very much. Although we are not praying for any other strike, thank you very much. Have a pleasant day. Right, well, thank you. Uh, I would like I would let you respond to that quickly, quickly because that's so not the we, subject of this well, question. It's today. I'm antithetical to strike. Um, I, have no, I don't see anywhere in the world except Nigeria where educational institutions would go on strike. Because if you put old on education, you have put old on development. Mm. Okay, we're talking about the president's kitchen cabinet that appears to be faulty at this point, and it appears as if um, that is what um, directs government actions yes. and inactions. Yeah, because the, when, when the president came, people had thought that, okay, now we have a president that will consider every sector of the country in, doing, in, in the display of governance and the administration of the country. But we were surprised when the kitchen cabinet was constituted in the way it was constituted. Some people came up with the excuse that the president has to bring people he trust. And uh, even if uh, oh, exactly they did not define what trust means to that context. And this is where we are based on that trust. Okay, So is it not time for the president? When people say we shouldn't blame the president, I don't think I buy that idea. I think we should blame the president when things are going wrong and he's unable to correct them. You understand, we will not blame him to have constituted a panel, a, a team of such persons, okay, because those are people he trusts. Sure. But we will begin to blame him when those people are failing and he's doing nothing about it. All right, we have Ishak calling from Just Plateau State. Good morning, welcome to the program, Ishak. Hello, hello. good morning, and good morning to your guest. Good morning. Uh, on, on chief of staff issue, I've said it in several forums, including uh, in this program, some time back on, uh, on theory. I think the chief of staff has been involved in several controversial matters. And the earlier the president realized that and came the chief of staff, the better for the nation. The so-called teaching cabinet or the cabal in the presidency is obvious to some of us who are uh, monitoring the political events in the country that is being headed or controlled by the chief of staff. The chief of staff is so strong that he's the last person that sees the president before the president goes to bed, and is the first person possibly that sees the president in the morning. So it determines who sees the president. So for a proper synergy or proper coordination in the presidency, I think one thing is key. You need to pick somebody who knows the only of who should be able to coordinate the altercation between the uh, the head of civil service and the chief of staff. It's unnecessary. It's a national embarrassment. I saw you on the TV. We don't need that. So I think this, I've, I've also advocated for cabinet reshuffle. This is a situation where we have the chief of staff, a member of NMPC uh, board, uh, and the, 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 the minister of state is the chairman. And so you can see the power play between the chief of staff and even the president. All right, and the All right of Ishak. State. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we expect, the Nigerians are expecting a cabinet reshuffle soon because um, President Buhari hinted. Um, on that at the NEC, APC neck meeting where he said his cabinet will be expanded and we expect that maybe there might be some reshuffle, some movements of uh, maybe some key people from one ministry or from one position to another position. Will that fix? Would you like to be a minister that it will take you six months to see the president? I'm throwing it back to you and I'm throwing it to you and I'm throwing it to you. It's not a function of cabinet. It's a function of system. The, the system, system itself is yeah, faulty. It's, 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 it's a systemic problem. And until we address the system, and I think these are the areas that we should look out for in, 20, in 2019, in the sense that I think there should be a provision in the Constitution yeah. that whoever will become the chief of staff to the president should not come from the same geopolitical zone of the president. It's important. When people bring that, in that is, that... is that a problem? No, no, no. no. Because when people, listen, listen, to listen to this. When, when, listen yeah, to this. It's when people... It's about diversity. What is about... What is university? University talks about diversity in knowledge. Yeah. Diversity. It's about diversity. It's about diversity. I, I'll tell you, the moment 
you see the kitchen cabinet that is constituted, you will know whether this government will succeed or this government will fail. I told you now, until General Kelly came into Donald Trump, where you could see the discordant tune that was going on. Yeah. Because you need someone to... When Obasanjo was the president, it was this general from Kwara State, General Abdullah or something like that, that was his chief of staff. You need someone with clout. You need someone with intelligence. You need someone with maturity. You need someone that can live above board. You said something, how would the chief of staff still be in NNPC board? My all right, goodness. All right. all right, then we have a caller. George is calling from Ikeja. Good morning, George. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Femi, and good morning to the panelists. Welcome. Good morning, good morning Brother uh, George. Uh, for me, um, I see the outburst of the head of service as a face saving device to sort of uh, cover up complicity. What has the president got to do with the reinstatement of an assistant director in the civil service? I was once a civil servant. The assistant director up to director is the full responsibility of the head of service. The president has nothing to do with uh, staff procedure. If an assistant director is to be reinstated, the head of service has no reason to go and consult the president. What she is simply doing is to avoid public disgrace because some of the documents are in the public domain that she signed you know, you know, months before. And she's only saying that two, or, uh, two months or uh, a month ago that she won the president. But the documents in circulation had been done by her over six, seven months ago. What is she talking about? I agree with um, the, uh, Dr. Jide Johnson that the chief of staff, I've said it before, the, the president's chief of staff he has become a stumbling block to the, to the president and to the nation. And the earlier he changes him, the better. But it is not about his capacity. It's about corruption. The man is corrupt, I dare say. So why? And if Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, um, the caller from Ikeja. Well, that um, allegation would have to be proven by a competent court of law. Well, now, before we lose sight of the um, main issue now, there are allegations coming from the EFCC quarters now that Maina is being protected by another security agency or another agency of government. Prior to that, you had Ministry of Interior. Under which, which agency is under Ministry of Interior? DSS is under Ministry of Interior. Are you with me? That at a point in time that guards were uh, the security agencies protecting uh, Maina are even much more than that of the Senate president of the seventh of the seventh senate mm. who happens to be david mark you know it raised a lot of issues under the seventh yes. seventh 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 senate it also tells you that it's about you see the the chief of staff who still come there is the brain box because is the central processing unit all ministries all agencies of the presidency is an institution all ministries, all agencies will come to the president. They, they derive, it's the president that delegates the responsibility to them. So the central processing unit for the presidency is the chief of staff. Now, when the one agency, when, when one agency is having a, is the one that brings them together to bring harmonization and for them not to have discordant, discordant tools. And for us to still have this issue, it will still come down to what we are saying, capacity. The capacity seems not to be there. All right, then we have um, our last caller for today. Divine is calling from Apapa, I believe. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning, gentlemen at the studio. Good morning, good morning sir. Yes, I'm a regular viewer of your program. Thank you. Yes, I want to say this. Go yes, ahead, Nigeria Divine. is a big country. And a state will keep each other together. The issue of where you come from shouldn't be the problem of this country. I want to just divert a little before I go to my point. Quickly. The president, the president is a president of Nigeria, and he should carry it and everyone along. But in as much as the sentiment is there, we fail. When you fail to appoint the right people, you fail in your government. And again, in as much as we cannot get any law that can bring these people to justice that does wrong, 
the government is bound to fail. And any institution that cannot stand, that means the government is, their hand is in need. So I want to say that let the government bring up an institution that will bring all these people that do wrong things in the government to book. Not when, I've said it before, not when a, a man steal a good, you prosecute him. But when a man embezzle government money, the money that sent for hospital to buy drugs, they will, they, they will, they will, they will give him applause that he's a, a fast person. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, he's saying there that we should fix the system. The problem is the system and not Abdul Rashid Baina. Yes, he's right by saying we should fix the system. But when you talk about the system, people drive the system. Okay? So when you're talking about fixing the system, you are talking about fixing the right people, using the right people to drive the system. That is what it means. So if we do not have the right people in the system, then you're going to have the same problem we have all through. The Nigeria must decide that we must do the right thing. The president should remember when he was campaigning. You know, you should remember the promises made, okay? Because this is one thing that is common in Nigeria, in Africa. A promise is a debt, okay? People should, as much as possible, live up to the promises they made during their life. Because when you have someone who is working at cross purpose with your vision and you allow it to fester, you understand? That is complicity. All right. You understand? And when you, have comp when you have done that, you don't have any moral justification to come back again and make further promises. Well, gentlemen, I must thank you both very much for coming on the program today. Dr. G.D. Johnson, Deputy Provost, NIJ, and Evans Ufeli, Lawyer and Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you both very much for it's coming on the program today. It's a pleasure. Well, that's how it's been on the program. You can watch a repeat broadcast later in the night today. My name is Femi Akonde. Thank you for watching. Thank you.